Joe Biden mumbles his way through the State of the Union. Migrants who escaped oppressive countries say New York City is too dangerous. Plus, Disney is under fire for another woke program for kids. All that and more. I'm Bobby Everly. This is a 13-minute news hour. God bless the United States of America. Okay, friends, welcome to the show. Happy Wednesday. I hope you're having a great week. If you're new to the show, thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to start with Joe Biden and his State of the Union address, because not only was it long and boring and inaccurate, it clearly showcased the fact that Joe Biden has no business being president now and should certainly not be running for president again. There was so much mumbling and bumbling that I lost count. Here's one example. Biden used his now common angry voice and threatened a veto. The problem is, I have no idea what he's threatening to veto. Make no mistake, if you try anything to raise the cost of presenting jobs, I will veto it. Okay, did you catch that? How about one more time? Make no mistake, if you try anything to raise the cost of presenting jobs, I will veto it. Nope. Still didn't get it, but here's the thing. Even when Biden didn't mumble, he still didn't make sense. Autocracy's grown weaker, not stronger. Name me a world leader who changed places with Xi Jinping. Name me one. Name me one. You see what I mean? Now, one exchange really stood out from last night, and that was Biden's attacks against former President Trump and the Republicans. Under Biden, we've had billions and billions in wasteful spending, and yet, because of COVID legislation that was passed amid lockdowns, Biden is trying to take credit for cutting the deficit. That's a joke. But then he went on and he said that even with his continued budget busting, Republicans should just lift the debt ceiling without any negotiations. That's when things went south. So my many, some of my Republican friends want to take the economy hostage. I get it, unless I agree to their economic plans. All of you at home should know what those plans are. Instead of making the wealthy pay their fair share, some Republicans, some Republicans want Medicare and Social Security to sunset. I'm not saying it's a majority. This is where things got weird. Biden said maybe it's not all Republicans. Then he said it was hardly any Republicans. Then he was said it was an individual or two. Then he actually got off into a side conversation while on national television. But it's being proposed by individuals. I'm not politely not naming them, but it's being proposed by some of you. Look, folks, the idea is that we're not gonna be, we're, we're not gonna be moved into being threatened to default on the debt if we don't respond. Folks. I could go on and on, but the speech was just a mess. He barely even mentioned the border. He mentioned China and said that America was in its strongest position in decades to take on China and even added this. As we made clear last week, if China threatens our sovereignty, we will act to protect our country and we did. So that's Joe Biden and the State of the Union. And as it stands right now, both are in bad shape. Okay, next let's talk about illegal border crossers we're now fleeing New York. But first, if you're new to the show or haven't subscribed yet, regardless of platform, just search on my name, hit that subscribe button, make sure notifications are turned on. That way you can follow the show and help us grow. Something interesting is going on with illegal border crossers in New York City. They want out. That's right. According to news reports, these people trek thousands of miles, fleeing hostile governments and enduring dangerous and violent conditions. Now, they're in New York City, and they're saying, forget this, we want out. For one thing, there are complaints that the food that they are receiving in some of these hotels is actually contaminated. This mom of two says sometimes the food smells bad, rotten, and every time the children eat the food like that, they get food poisoning. Well, that's not a good situation. Eat the food and then get sick. Check out what New York Mayor Eric Adams had to say. The Mayor Adams implies the migrants are just being picky. People may have a different uh, 
cultural tastes for certain foods. We can't do that. We can only provide nutrition, food for people. In addition, these illegal border crossers are complaining about the housing conditions being provided in New York City. Some of the asylum seekers told me they were moved to the emergency shelter in Red Hook, but came back to the Watson Hotel, unsatisfied with the housing at the cruise terminal. It's inhumane. It's inhumane what these people are, are living through. It's Edward arrived in New York City about a month ago from the Texas-Mexico border. He says there are not enough bathrooms at the cruise terminal, and they have to walk outside of the relief center to find them. But that's not all. The Daily Mail interviewed some migrants. Again, these people are escaping terrible conditions, and these migrants are shocked at the conditions in New York. One migrant commented on all the drug use at the nearby homeless shelters. Another said he was leaving for Canada because of the crime. Just classic. Maybe that's the increase in border security that we need. Forget building a wall. We'll just tell migrants that if they cross the border illegally, they'll be shipped to New York City. All right, next let's talk about the Disney Corporation, which is once again taking heat for children's programming that has nothing to do with fun or education or entertainment and everything to do with left-wing indoctrination. Disney is rebooting the Proud Family program, but this time it has gone woke. Disney getting a lot of criticism for its reboot of The Proud Family. Here's a clip. Slaves built this country. And we, the descendants of slaves in America, have earned reparations for their suffering. And continue to earn reparations every moment we spend submerged in the systemic prejudice, racism, and white, white supremacy that America was founded with and still has not atoned for. Wow. Do you think that children's shows will bring children together? Do you think that this will make them want to play with other kids on the block who don't look like them? It's a bogus critical race theory being pushed on children, and it is the complete opposite of bringing people together in the great American melting pot. Here's comments from radio show host Stacey Washington. Okay, so we grew up watching Sesame Street and He-Man and other cartoons like that, right, Todd? So we were busy thinking about how we could, you know, have superpowers and do amazing things. And these kids are being taught that they need to look at each other by the color of their skin. It goes against what Martin Luther King taught us. It goes against what the Bible tells us about unity and being together in the brotherhood of man. But most importantly, did you hear how horrible that sounded? No creativity, no, no actual fun for the kids. Great comments from Washington. And it shows that we need to be always on guard regarding so-called children's programming. Entertainment has been hijacked by the left, and they will keep doing this until we push back. All right, next Kamala Harris made the rounds this morning trying to sell and defend Joe Biden's comments from the State of the Union. Not an easy task. And it shows you the kind of mess this administration is in when Kamala Harris is the one sent out to do the cleanup. However, she's certainly ready to run again. How are you feeling about the job these days that you're doing and people's perception of you on the ticket? Well, let me first of all say, as the president has said, uh, he intends to run it. And if he does, I'll be running with him. Yep, she's ready. But both Biden and Harris are clearly not able to do the job. What about basic defense of our country? Harris was asked about the Chinese spy balloon. Check it out. We know the balloon was shot down, but your, your administration is still getting a lot of pushback on why you didn't shoot it down earlier when it was on the West Coast before it traveled all across the country picking up who knows what. In hindsight, do you all think, well, maybe we should have taken action a little earlier? Are you pleased with how you handled it? Good question. After all, this was an invasion into our airspace from a spy balloon. Here's Harris's response. I think that the president, without any question, and I spend a lot of time with him in the Oval Office when he sits behind that resolute desk making decisions about what is in the best interest of the American people. And I wish people could see what I see, because he always has the well-being and the safety of the American people first and foremost in his mind. We've been clear about the policy as it, turns, as it relates to China. First of all, when there's a violation of our sovereignty, such as the president described last night, Took the balloon down. Done. Unreal. What can you even say to that? The Biden-Harris team let the balloon complete its mission, traversing the entire country, finishing its job. Then Biden shot it down. Here's Harris on the handling of classified documents. 
What do you think needs to be done to stop to figure out a way to handle classified documents? Because it seems to be equal opportunity screw ups on both sides. Well, listen, when we look at the, the nature of these documents, they're, they're very serious and there are, there are very good rules and protocols in place. And I know that they are being followed. Hmm. Harris said there are very good rules and protocols in place and she knows they are being followed. If there's any reason why some Democrats do want Joe Biden to run again, it's because they don't want Kamala Harris. All right, next let's talk about the Associated Press and the organization's hostility to crisis pregnancy centers. As an exercise, when you get a chance, just go on YouTube and search Associated Press Crisis Pregnancy Center. What you will find is a list of videos almost exclusively bashing crisis pregnancy centers. One headline even reads how crisis pregnancy centers harm pregnant people. Notice how it didn't even say pregnant women. Here's a sample of one of the videos on the list. This one from MSNBC. This next one is really crazy. Did you know that there are now more than 2,500 so-called crisis pregnancy centers around the country? In fact, the crisis pregnancy centers outnumber abortion clinics three to one nationwide. Don't let the name fool you, though. The mission of these centers is to convince women to not have abortions. Staff at these facilities have been accused of allegedly sharing false information with women who come looking for help. Some states are even providing taxpayer funding for these operations. Wow. It's OK to use taxpayer funds to end an innocent human life, but taxpayer funds to save a life? Can't have any of that. These people are just sick. And that brings me back to the Associated Press. The AP has now issued new guidelines which instruct reporters to not even use the terms crisis pregnancy center or pregnancy resource center. What does the AP suggest instead? It wants reporters to use anti-abortion centers in all cases. That's right. According to the left, anything and everything associated with abortion at any stage of a pregnancy is a good thing. So anything else is bad, is the opposite, is anti. Crisis pregnancy centers help counsel women. They help with adoptions. They do everything they can to provide aid and comfort to the mother and the child. The Associated Press wants to erase all of that narrative by simply calling the establishments anti-abortion centers. It's just pathetic. The AP says reporters should avoid potentially misleading terms such as crisis pregnancy resource centers or pregnancy counseling centers because these terms don't convey that the center's general aim is to prevent abortions. I'm just wondering if the AP finds the term Planned Parenthood misleading. Friends, that's our show for today. I hope you enjoyed it. And don't forget, if you're new to the show or haven't subscribed yet, regardless of platform, just search out my name, hit that subscribe button, make sure notifications are turned on. That way you can follow the show and help us grow. Thank you so much for tuning in. And remember, today's show's one sheet is available to Patreon supporters using the link in the description. The one sheet gives you the links to all the videos and stories used on today's show, so you can dive even deeper into each issue. And with that, our next show will be Friday evening at the usual time. Until then, I'm Bobby Eberly. This is a 13-minute news hour. All right, friends, thanks again for tuning in. I really appreciate it. And before you go, please hit that subscribe button above. Once you do, tell your friends, share it, spread the word about the 13-minute news hour so we can keep growing. And for more great content, check out these videos right here, and I'll see you next time.